How's it going? This might be a new thing that I do where I just look over the football news for the morning, give my reaction and honest thoughts to it. It is a trial. First bit of news is that Manchester United are preparing to hand Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a new contract, even if the club finished the season without a trophy amid confidence, real progress is being made under the Norwegian. Um, this begs the question, does Oli deserve a new contract? It's going to be two years with an extra year optional added on. The questions that we have to ask ourselves are, number one, does Oli deserve a new contract? Number two, who could they get better instead of Oli into the club? Now, the two managers that first come to my mind that are out of work at the moment and that could be available for employment for Manchester United, one... And this one's going to be the least popular out of the two, Maurizio Sarri. Now, people are going to hear that name and think, mm, are you sure about that one, Chief? But hear me out. He got Chelsea to a Carabao Cup final where they lost on penalties to Manchester City. He got him to third place in the league and he won the Europa League. Now, if you ask me, that's almost as much as Manchester United are going to be doing this season under Ollie anyway. Is it much worse? Is it much worse? And he got them to a Carabao Cup final. So they got to two finals. They won one of them. And he got them into third in the Premier League. In my opinion, that's better than what Ollie's going to do this season. Because at the rate that he's going anyway, Manchester United are going to be third. Because Leicester are hot on their tail. Chelsea have momentum at the moment. So it's no guarantee that Manchester United are going to finish second anyways. The other one is Massimiliano Allegri who we all know has a huge reputation off of the back of managing Juventus and stopping that job in 2019. Again, could you say it's worse than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? I'm, I'm not so sure that you could. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, during his time as official Manchester United manager, has a 53.3% win percentage. David Moyes has a 50.9% win percentage overall at Manchester United. Now, granted, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has had 118 matches as official Manchester United manager. David Moyes had 51. So, you know, we have to put that into context and say that Ole's had more games, so it's harder to have a higher win percentage. But when you look at that win percentage, it's not too dissimilar. It's not too far away. So could you say Manchester United would be in a worse off position if they had Allegri or Sarri at the helm? That's not to discredit the job that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has done at Manchester United. He's surpassed expectations in terms of what we thought was possible for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But has he surpassed expectations for what should be possible for Manchester United? They haven't won a trophy since 2017. That's four years. That's not good enough for Manchester United. They haven't so much as won a League Cup within those four years. It's, it's not good enough. Cold hard facts right now. Should Sarri... Or Allegri be in charge of our league on a soul shot. I'm not going to answer that question. If you're watching this video, you answer the question in the comments. There you go. According to Barcelona legend Rivaldo, Lionel Messi is close to signing another contract or a contract extension. Yeah, another contract with Barcelona. This is staggering news because considering the fact that in order for Ginny Wijnaldum to move to Barcelona, they need to get rid of Pjanic because that's another bit of news as well. That tells me that they can't necessarily afford to take Ginny on without getting rid of Pjanic, but they can afford to give Messi a new multi, 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 multi million euro extension on his time at Barcelona considering the club is facing administration and facing bankruptcy to be able to give Lionel Messi a new contract in which he's either gonna have to take a huge pay cut which I can't see him doing or them have, having to give him a pay rise to convince him to stay there which I can see being a more realistic option it's incredible I don't know how they're pulling money out of their ass pocket are they borrowing it are they lending it you know are they gonna have a spree of selling players I'm presuming that's what they're gonna have to do in order to fund this new Messi deal because I can't see him I can't see it happening otherwise because I can't see them affording it I mean the man's on what is it like half a million euros a week something like that something ridiculous I don't know how they're gonna afford it in more Liverpool news today Egypt have apparently once again declared their interest in having Mohamed Salah for the Olympic Games. They want Mohamed Salah and obviously this would be to a, to a possible detriment to Liverpool Football Club because if he goes in the Olympic Games, gets injured, then we're fucked, basically. We're screwed because the Olympics are either June or July time. I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to check. Losing Mohamed Salah for the start of next season as well could be hugely detrimental. Obviously, we're going to have Virgil van Dijk back. We're going to have Joe Gomez back. We're going to have Hendo back. All the players who have been injured this season, hopefully, hopefully, touch, touch wood, touch wood, we're going to have them back for next season. So the title, the title challenge could be on again, possibly, hopefully, optimistically. But if we lose Mohamed Salah... 
It won't be. Let's face it, this season, he's the reason why we're not in mid-table, to be honest, why we're not, you know, 12th, 13th, 14th. He's been scoring the goals. He's been the main man. You know, he's joint top scorer in the Premier League at the moment. I don't think that international international tournaments, international friendlies, international games, whether that be the Olympics, the Euros, the World Cup, I don't think they're as important as the club football because they're the ones who pay his wages they're the ones who pay his t over two hundred thousand pound a week wages not the international federations not the international football clubs not the international fas clubs pay the wages the clubs should have the say they could declare their interest all they want but unless liverpool football club give the sign off on it i don't think he should be going anywhere obviously i understand that as a player it's it's a sense of pride you know it's a sense of achievement to be able to say that i played for my country in an Olympic Games, I played for my country in a World Cup. I played for my country in a Euros. You know, but I just, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't see if Liverpool have any say in this. I don't think they should be letting him go. To be honest with you. Interesting news is Juventus are reportedly considering a move for Zinedine Zidane, obviously the Real Madrid manager, as they look to let Andrea Pirlo go. I thought the appointment of Pirlo was insane in the first place. Obviously, we've seen tester managers, I want to say, with Frank Lampard, with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, with, with ex-players like that. But to give Pirlo the job at Juventus and still want to challenge for the Champions League was a bit of a tough ask for me, you know, to, to throw him in at the deep end and say, here you go. How the fuck is he going to do? Do that realistically but getting Zidane in there is it going to make it much better we've seen that without Ronaldo Real Madrid haven't been performing as well as they have been for the past couple of seasons obviously they won three Champions Leagues in a row incredible achievement but all of that squad was so harmonious on firing on all cylinders I'm not sure if having a resurgence with Zinedine Zidane with Ronaldo is gonna make that same thing make that same thing stick make that same connection I'm not so sure that it's going to pan out the way that Juventus want it to. And Real Madrid reportedly have no interest in letting Martin Odegaard leave this summer. This is bad news for Arsenal fans because he's been very, very good. So I'm not going to go overboard and say he's been exceptional. Loads of people you know, have been have been really blowing smoke up his asshole. And I don't think he's been that good. As in, like, I don't think he's been as good as they're saying. <laughs> not, I don't think he's been that good. I don't think he's been as good as they're saying. Has he improved Arsenal? Yes, tenfold, 100%. He's given him such an attack and outlet. When he gets the ball, he wants to drive. He wants to create things. He's dynamic. He has shots from outside the box, which is not something that Arsenal have been doing a lot this season before he came to the club. So he's really been injecting life, injecting youth, injecting a drive to win games into Arsenal. So do I think they should go out and buy him? 100% if they can. But Real Madrid here are shutting down all notions of him leaving Spain this summer. He said he's happy at Arsenal, though. If the Gunners can pull off that move, that will be a huge coup for them because I think he has been a fantastic addition to their team. But it looks like Real Madrid aren't willing to let him go so easy. I don't know what's going to happen. So yeah, those are all the news stories that I've seen for this morning anyway. If you like this, let me know because I want to do more of this type of shit. Yeah, have a good one anyway. I'll catch you in a bit. It's all right, have a good day.